Amen. Jesus, Jesus rode a donkey to Jerusalem. He sat on it. And people were singing Hosanna in the highest. They found lay rug down. And this animal crawled on it. The animal must not make a mistake. The rug, the Hosanna song was not for him. But he that sat on him. Let's clap better for Jesus. He resounded clapping for Jesus. Jesus is the Alpha. Jesus is the Omega. The end and the beginning. Our peace. Our righteousness. Our warrior. Our defender. Our leader. The Lord that fight for us. The Lord of us is his name. He is the rock of ages. He is the ancient of days. He is the I am that I am. He is the Lord mighty in battle. The Lord of us is his name. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. I know there is a reason why our daddy in the Lord, Dr. Dike Olukoya, has sent me here today. It's for someone. God wants to bring someone out of carnal. You know something we call palm carnal. There is a seed inside. That seed is full of oil. What we call anointing. Anointing for success, for breakthrough, international. It's inside there. But that canon must break before that seed can manifest. There is someone here this morning. It is time for you to manifest. And that canon that has caged your life must break into pieces this month. In the name of Jesus. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. on the cross for us. We thank you for your precious blood that redeemed us from our destruction. 
We thank you for power that was released on our behalf on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for your glory. Thank you for the power of your name. Because at the mention of your name, every name must bow. You have done this and it's marvelous in our sight. Lord, the power of your name, the power of your blood, the power of your word. Let the three of them walk together for us this morning in the name of Jesus. We must never be the same. Before the end of this year, our life must receive a remarkable transformation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer point before you sit down. Pray it with only aggression. Pray it with all your power. Amen. Say any power. Any power. Say it louder than that. That say I will not manifest the glory of God. You are a liar. Any power that say I will not manifest the glory of God. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Say, household witchcraft assigned to cage my destiny. Say it louder. Wherever you are, die in the name of Jesus. Household witchcraft assigned to cage my destiny. Wherever you are, die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. As with witchcraft. Assigned to catch my destiny. Wherever you are. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. God bless you. Let's have our seats. Let's bring out our Bible, our writing materials. We are going to get into the word of God together this morning. But before we do that, let's use one stone to kill two birds. Let's bring out our tithe and offering. I want us to pray on that. So that we can take that out of the way. Because by the end, by the time we enter into this message, uh, where God is taking us to, we are entering into anointing surface straight. And we don't want anything to interrupt it. Let's take that out of the way now. Can you bring it out? Let me bring out my own as well. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are the one that gives us power to make words. And out of that abundance you have given to us, we bring this token unto you as our offering, as our tithe. Father, take and receive them from us in the name of Jesus. Bless us mightily in hundredfold out of your kindness. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
Amen. God bless you. The ushers will be going around while you listen to the message. Don't allow distraction. Just focus. As you drop your offering, you listen to this message. Yeah, I'm sharing with you on something that is very strange this morning. And I want you to be very ready because of what God told me he wants to do in this service this morning. I'm sharing with us on what I call the anointing to kill witchcraft. Do you hear it? The anointing to kill witchcraft. The anointing to kill witchcraft. We are going to open to the book of First King, chapter 19. First King, chapter 19. First King, chapter 19. Are you there? If you are there, shout hallelujah. I read verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And without how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. I want to pause. Jezebel, a notorious witch. Not just a witch, a queen. She was ruling the nation of Israel by directing her husband, Ahab. Elijah happened to be one of the most dangerous prophets that has ever come into this world. Someone that challenged all the prophets of Baal to a contest of Mount Carmel. Someone who had faith to bring fire of God down while the fire of the enemy could not be kindled. Someone who caught fire from heaven to consume 51 soldiers. As if that was not enough, they sent another 51. He sent fire again. And there were ashes, 102 ashes of soldiers, burnt by fire that came from heaven. The same Elijah after he has accomplished a defined task on Mount Carmel, whereby he slaughtered all the prophets of Baal, 40 of them, that withstood him on Mount Carmel, as if that was not enough. Jezebel, this particular witch, sent a message to Elijah, by this time tomorrow, if your head is still on your neck, Come, a bastard. Let the God do it to me. And so, and more than that, there is no way you can be on your neck, your head can be on your neck by this time tomorrow. You are, you are dead. The message was sent to Elijah. And when Elijah had it, he ran. He ran for his life. He ran into the wilderness. And there, God met with him, but not until after 40 days of fasting retreat on Mount Oreb. If you read this chapter 19 very well, you will see it there. God met with him, and God said, Elijah, what are you doing here? He said, I'm running away from my life. I'm running away from my dear life. Jezebel wants to kill me. And God took a particular step that day. And that is what I want you to see. Praise the Lord. That first King 19, let's see.
from verse 14. Please, when you are reading, read carefully so that you won't miss the word of God. And he said, I have been very, I'm reading 1 Kings 19 from verse 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken their confidence, thrown down their altars, and slain the prophet with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint. Somebody say anoint. Anoint Asahel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat of Abilene, Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. He was to anoint three people. Asael, Jehu, and Elisha. Everything, anoint, anoint, anoint. And there is no anointing without an assignment. It's not possible. I've never seen anointing without an assignment. Anointing is to perform something extraordinary, something superhuman, something that man cannot do. So what was the assignment? Let's read the next verse. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Asahel shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Praise the Lord. So he arranged, he anointed people that we slaughter, that we kill. And to be sincere with you, it was the anointing of Jehu that fascinates me. When Jehu was anointed, in fact, the anointing of Jehu was a drama. They sent a prophet. They said, take your horn of anointing. Go here now. You will see where they gather. Ask for a captain called Jehu and invite him to the to the inner room. When you get to the inner room, tell him that he have sent me to anoint you as king. And immediately you anoint him. Just quickly pour the oil on his head. As you are pouring the oil, just make an announcement that you are now the king of Syria and flee for your life. I, I say, at least after anointing, there should be celebration now. Huh? He said, no, don't wait to celebrate you. Don't wait. Immediately the oil come upon the head of this man. You should flee for your life. I, I, I couldn't understand that. Why should he flee? Why should he run? And I come to understand it that Jehu was to be anointed to kill. The purpose of his anointing was to kill. Praise the Lord. So, Jehu was anointed and let's see how the anointing came on. Second King chapter 9. Second King chapter 9. Are you there? Look at verse 1. And Elijah the prophet called one of the children of the prophet and said unto him, Guide up your loins and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest there, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus said the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and do what? And flee and tarry not. Tarry not. Because if you wait, you may be the first casualty. Praise the Lord. Immediately Jehu was anointed, he started the operation. What was the operation? 
he started doing that assignment that God has given to him. The assignment has to do with killing. The assignment has to do with elimination. The enemies of God. The assignment has to do with breaking down altars of darkness until the enemies were totally eliminated from the sin. Praise the Lord. People of God, there's something I want us to know about God. It is strange sometimes when we say it, but it is inside the Bible. Our God is a killer. God is a killer. God is a killer. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. Are you there? What does he say? First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth all. Read Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy 32, verse 29. You will see how God declare himself. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Deuteronomy 32. See what God say about himself. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Praise the Lord. Something happened in our ministry some few days ago. And I want to share with you. We really thank God for God of Dr. D.K. Ulukoya. God of mountain of fire and miracle ministry. I've never seen any other God like that. Praise the Lord. Somebody called at night on phone that she was a lady, a member of the church. She said she developed a sudden stomach problem. She was vomiting and she was she fell from the bed and was rolling on the floor. So I started praying with her on phone. The pain disappeared and she resumed back to work the following morning. Then the following night, the thing started at midnight again. Then they rushed out to hospital from that place. And they, they diagnosed, they said that they found big stone inside a gallbladder. That the stone, if they don't remove it quickly, that she may die. And they have to do operation. Praise the Lord. So, she now put a call through to me. Pastor, what do we do? I said, no, come to the church. Don't allow them to do operation. Because that thing, how did the, the thing come there? Over the night. Who planted it there? So, she came to the church. While I was counseling, some pastor were ministering to her. And I wanted to go there to run the prayer hall when the Lord said, witchcrafts in operation. And if you don't kill them, they will kill her. Ah! Witchcraft in operation. If you don't kill them, they will kill her. Hmm. So, we changed the realm of the prayer. As we started the prayer, the power of God fell on us. It started manifesting. To our surprise, the, the, the witchcraft powers, the witches, they spoke out from our body loud that everybody could hear. They said, don't kill us. So. We are here on assignment. They asked us to kill her. Who asked you to kill her? You will be surprised to hear. They say, our mother. It's our own mother that has given us the assignment from the coffin that we should kill her. We now say, what has she done? 
And they said, according to her mother, in 2015, the destiny of this sister is that she will be traveling to America. The next stage of her destiny is to go to America. But the mother has concluded that no. And she's adamant to fulfill her destiny. And because of that, they say, instead of us allowing her to go, we kill her. So they planted a stone inside her gallbladder. So we now, so it's, it's simple. Which one? We kill you or you take the stone away. If you don't take the stone away out of her tummy, you are the one that will die. He said, why? But we cannot die. We are given an assignment by our mother. And we quoted scriptures for them. Some of the scripture is this. Exodus 22 verse 18. It says, suffer not a witch to live. Look at that. Suffer not a witch to live. There is another scripture. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 27. Let's go there. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 27. Leviticus 20. Are you there? Leviticus 20, verse 27. What does he say? He said, A man also, or a woman, that has a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Praise the Lord. We quoted, you are practicing witchcraft. This is something God hates. None must practice witchcraft. God hates witchcraft because witchcraft is the executive arm of the devil, of satanic kingdom that always try to turn down, to turn upside down anything that is the will of God. Note it very well. Witchcraft. In fact, the word witchcraft has to do with change, distort, turn upside down. Something from the will of God to something else. That is the meaning of witchcraft. If you follow the meaning literally. Praise the Lord. That's why witchcraft is in charge of changing destiny. It's in charge of manipulating people away from the will of God. Witchcraft is in charge of caging people's life. It's in charge of tying them down. It's in charge of stealing, killing, and destroying. So, there is no way God we are, we call a person, a prophet, that will not give him assignments that has to do with activity against witchcraft. So, I'm not surprised that God called Jehu to go and attack Jezebel. He said, one of the assignments I gave to you, Jehu, with this anointing upon your head, is to go and locate Jezebel. And you must kill her. That is what that was the assignment. Praise the Lord. If you look at it again, many people don't understand the MFM at all. Many people, they say, why is your prayer, it's just most of it is against the enemy. It's because they don't know the Bible. They don't know the scriptures. They don't even understand the will of God. Open with me to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Once I finish sharing this with you, then we begin to pray. And then we enter into our anointing service. Jeremiah chapter 1. Look at verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Behold, now verse 5. Be, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. What was the assignment of this prophet? Look at verse 10. Please note it very well. It's a six-point agenda. And I want you to know it. This is the pattern that your life should follow. This is what you should learn to do. 
This is where you should gain wisdom about how to succeed in life. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to do six things. We have to list them. Please, if you write them one by one. Number one is to do what? To root out. Number two, to pull down. Number three, to destroy. Number four, to throw down. Number five, to build. Number six, to plant. Now, look at it one by one. The first one says to root out. According to Matthew 15, verse 13, it says, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. We need to uproot what God has not planted. There are many things that God did not plant in your life. Enemy planted it there. What must be done to them? They must be uprooted. Because it's not God that put it there. Like the stomach of this sister I was talking about, the enemy planted stone there. It must be uprooted. I decree to your life this morning. All that God has not planted in your life, that witchcraft planted, they shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Please let your amen be resounding when we are praying for you. Hmm. Number two, he said, to pull down. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3 to 4 and 5, he said, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God. To do what? To pull it down of strong oaths. Pulling down of strong oaths. God has ordained us to pull down strong gold. Strong gold of occultic power. Strong gold of witchcraft. We need to pull them down. Then, the number three assignment talk about what? To destroy. First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3 verse 8 says, For this purpose... The Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the work of Satan, the work of the devil, to destroy the work of the enemy. You don't leave their work to prosper. You have to destroy it. And number four, to throw down, to throw down. How did Jehu kill Jezebel? Open with me to, we will come back to this place. Open with me to the book of 2 King chapter 10. 2 King chapter 10. We'll come back here. 2 King 10. Quickly. Then we will see. 2 King chapter 10. Look at verse 30. 2 King chapter 9, sorry. Chapter 9, verse 30. 2 King chapter 9, verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tied her head and looked out of, at a window. Why was she painting her face? Seduction. Witchcraft is the mistress of seduction. All those ladies that use all manner of painting, decoration, lipstick, weave form, and they begin to twist like snake. They all left. Then it's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Because they want to seduce you. You are not their candidate, but they want to catch you. Somebody shout Hallelujah. To be sincere with you. God has ordained a partner for you. There is no need for seduction for you to get the will of God. Amen. Jezebel started painting her face. But <laughs> this one, Jehu, the kind of anointing he has on his head, does not even look at the face of a woman. Verse 31. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, At Simri, peace, who slew his master. 
and he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out unto him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he throwed her on the foot. This morning, the power of witchcraft that has caged your destiny, that say you will not go, that say you will not manifest the glory of, of God upon your life, shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. The assignment given to Jehu was the anointing to kill witchcraft. He went after her to look for her. He met her at a high place. And she thought she could seduce him. She was thrown down. Part of the assignment God gave to Jeremiah. Four things. Look at the six assignments very well. The first one has to do with uprooting. The second one has to do with pulling down. The third one has to do with destroy. The third one is throw down. Now, look at all those four. The kind of prayer you can pray before you get them done. There has to be violent prayer you see in Mountain of Fire and Miracle Ministry. Now, if you don't carry out the four assignments and you begin to plant or you begin to build, you are deceiving yourself. Because a man that plants granite in a land that has been infested with land scorer will never harvest anything. Praise the Lord. If you want to plant an harvest, you have to deal with the enemy. If you don't deal with witchcraft, they won't allow you to lift up your head. They won't even allow you to manifest your glory. That sister that was sharing testimony this morning, I will tell you the secret, the mechanism, how God has brought her to this level. It's very simple. Enemy cage our destiny. The God of Dr. D. K. Hulukoya removed it. And the destiny manifested. You will manifest your destiny. In the name of Jesus. The life of this sister has been waiting. The, the whole world has been waiting for our glory to manifest. But somebody sat on it. A power caged it. But by the time a helper of destiny. Say, Lord, send my helper of destiny. A helper of destiny brought her to the church. And that is where, by the time she prays some, die, die, die. And that's what happened. Amen. That is the secret. The Bible says something that when you read it, you'll be surprised. It says, the enemies are desperately wicked and they don't know how to do right. The more you beg them, the more they torment you. The more you appease them, the more they torment you. The more you bribe them with money. Many of you, you've prepared their Christmas gift now. It doesn't stop them from afflicting you because they don't know how to do right. It's not in their dictionary. Amos 3.10 says that. He said, no matter what you do to these wicked people, they will continue to do their wickedness and they will not learn righteousness. Isaiah 26.10 also say, no matter what you do for them, they will not let you go. Is they are so just wicked. Praise the Lord. So, when we started praying with this sister, I told you in the church, the one they planted stone inside the tummy. The witches started confessing. They asked her to kill her because she wants to manifest the glory of God. It is time for her to shine. It is time for her to go there. And we now say, you are going to die or you carry your stone and go away. 
He said, but it's a mandate given to them. He said, no, you can't kill this one. She has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And our Redeemer is strong. Let somebody say, my Redeemer is strong. Jeremiah chapter 50. We begin to pray now. Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah chapter 50. Please note the two verses we want to read. Verse 33 and 34. Make sure you hold on to the word of God that you find here. Please hold on to it. This word of God is so powerful that you have to hold on to it. Thus hear the Lord of hosts. Jeremiah 50 verse 33 and 34. Thus hear the Lord of hosts. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. The power that caged their destiny refused to let them go. So, how would they get out? Look at verse 34. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. How will he do it? He shall thoroughly plead their cause. And that he may give rest to the land. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Say, my Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will thoroughly plead my cause. He will fight my battle. He will disgrace my enemy. The witchcraft powers in charge of my destiny shall be destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me, people of God. Don't forget this all your life. There is a difference between a witch and witchcraft powers. Note it, yo. A witch is a human being who is operating from a coffin who has received satanic power to do evil. It's a human being. The person has a flesh and blood. That's a witch. But we have witchcraft powers. Witchcraft power, they are demonic, invisible powers that are sponsoring the witches. They are the power behind the witches. The witches don't take their own decision. As they are instructed in their coffin by witchcraft power. That is the decision they come to take on that. Understand it very well. A man of God called me from his hometown. He said he was, he, he experienced a, a, a revelation that was shocking to him. He saw some strange power that were coming out at the center of the town. Those power, they were not human at all. And they were visiting each house. They would get to the front of the house. They say, all you witches in this house, come out. And they come out. They bow before them and they give them assignment. You are to kill 10 more so before the end of this year. You are to cage so number of people. You are to shed blood like this. When they finish the assignment, they move to another family. They move to another family until they go around. Then they will go back to where they came out under the ground and enter there again. When the man of God saw it, I said, what did you do? He said, God said they should organize crusade seven days. After the seven days of prayer, they should also go around as those people used to go at night that they too should go around. So they organized themselves. They were going around. They were going around. When they got to that portion, that's where they used to come out. Something like a bomb came. Wow! They didn't know where the first came. Their gas lamp they carry at night, the thing broke. Everybody ran. Everybody. They ran. They got to their different houses separately. You are laughing. Did they not try? Can you come out at night? Praise the Lord. So when I visited this man of God, he told me this story. I said, no wonder the Lord wants me to come. I said, we are going to that joint tonight. He said, you and we. I said, me and you. Me and you, we are going to that center. He said, there is no 
no lamp for us to take along. I say, the, the other time you carry lamp, what happened to it? We don't need lamp. The Lord is lamp unto our feet. Yes, the Lord is light and darkness cannot comprehend him. Let's go in the power of the Lord. So we went there. Praise the Lord. We got there, cut out to 12. And we joined hand together. We say, the power that, witchcraft power, that is operating on this point, that used to come out, 